If you're struggling with Hive PvP, you're probably making one or more of the mistakes in this video. By the end of the video, using these small tips could turn your PvP from this into this. Today, I called up Piglin Mafia, who is a very quickly growing YouTuber in the Hive community. His channel is focused on Hive PvP and how to get better at it. The first thing that Piglin and I talked about is a mistake that I used to make a long time ago, which has to do with sensitivity. A lot of people try to do high sensitivity so they can get fast reaction time, more shots on their opponent, or at least they think so. So just getting used to low sensitivity will make it a lot easier for you to land more hits. Having too high sensitivity was actually a mistake that I used to make when I first started Hive PvP. This first footage is gameplay of really high sensitivity. As you can see, the footage is really shaky. It's so much harder to aim and keep your combos due to how quickly the mouse is moving. When you lose your combo, you have to get it back, and it's hard to do that with the cursor moving so quickly. Now here's some footage with a lot lower sensitivity. It's a lot easier to keep combos, the footage looks so much smoother, and as you can see, my aim is tons better, and I can just kill people so much easier. As far as like low sensitivity goes, I'm moving my mouse about 3 to 4 inches left or right, about 15-20 sensitivity somewhere around there's a good place to start and I recommend starting around 20 and then moving up and down in intervals of five until you find a sensitivity that's very good for you aiming. A lot of people use Kino packs like RK Fault, which have very bright blue vibrant skies or very bright orange vibrant skies. They're going to make it a lot harder for you to aim in PvP as it's going to be a lot harder to distinguish the colors between your opponent and the sky. What Piglin said about the skies actually makes a lot of sense. Having really distracting skies like this one can definitely affect your gameplay by not only distracting you, but also making things a little bit harder to hit by them blending in with the skies. I have buttons on the side of my mouse because I have the Model O, which is a glorious mouse, and I use those buttons to hotkey to my sword and to my blocks. Having buttons on the side of your mouse makes a huge difference with hotkeying. For example, I have two buttons on the side of my mouse, which go to my sword and my seventh slot, and for my seventh slot, I use blocks. This makes it very easy to bridge and quickly switch to your sword if you need to. Another thing Piglin mentioned is the Glorious Model O mouse, which is a very highly regarded mouse and it's very good for PvP. I have a link to the Glorious Model O mouse in the description, which will help you with not only your PvP, but also your hotkeys to having the buttons on the side of that mouse. So if you are interested in that, feel free to check that in the description. I know it would help you out a ton. I definitely advise doing them slowly, like do a few hotkeys at a time. I think I started with F, which is a hotkey to my third slot, which is where I put my snowballs. I picked that up from Ignacio Blade. And then a few days afterward, I added my V hotkey, which hotkeys to my pearls. One really big thing I want to talk about is not taking your favorite YouTuber's hotkeys just because they're your favorite YouTuber. You can always take inspiration from others on what hotkeys to use, but never copy someone, or especially your favorite YouTuber, just because they have hotkeys that work for them. Everyone's playstyle is a ton different, so make sure you test a lot and find what works best for you. A really cool. underestimated hotkey <laughs> is a hotkey to your like, toggle perspective, because a lot of people I think it's still F5, and that's kind of hard to reach. So I changed my R key. The R key on my keyboard. That's mine too. You can just like look behind you thoughtlessly, and it's something that mobile players can't do. Sorry to anybody out there playing a phone. This next tip is something people ask me in my live streams very frequently, so make sure to listen. It is about FOV and suggested FOV. Sensitivity definitely does a lot with your aim, and I have a low sensitivity, low DPI, and I actually have a low FOV too, so he's bigger on my screen and he's very easy to hit. And if I go to my settings and I raise my FOV to max, it's a lot harder to aim at him, especially when I'm sprinting. It's a lot more chaotic. So I use 90 FOV altered off, so he's larger on my screen, and anywhere around there does. It, FOV really depends on the person, and you can definitely make the FOV work for you, but starting with a low FOV would definitely make it easier for you to practice aim. If you just like get the mindset to lock your wrist and just move your arm and your hand all together, it'll make it a lot easier. Aiming with your arm looks like what I'm doing right now. As you see, there's like no movement on my wrist whatsoever. And my aim will eventually get better because I do this and not aim with my wrist. Okay, so bow aim. A lot of people will aim their bow just at a player. That will like drop the arrow to hit the ground. I feel like a lot of YouTubers that I watch, they aim a little bit lower and that you'll land less hits, especially if you uh, jump. Don't, just don't get in the habit of jumping when you do. Jumping in PvP is probably the biggest mistake you can make. In this clip here, I asked Piglin to try and combo me without me jumping at all, just trying to strafe, and it took some effort. Then I asked him to try and combo me with me jumping, and it became so much easier. Even when I was fighting him with a sword and he was using his fist, my jump gave him such a big advantage. Do not jump during PvP. It is a huge mistake. Strafing one direction is a very good idea because it makes your aim very easy, as opposed to just, like strafing two opposite directions 
positions, which will make it a lot harder for you to aim. So strafing one way is what Jbro does. He'll strafe one way until he's punched, and then he'll start strafing the other way until he's punched, and he'll go back and forth that way. Now that you've learned all these PvP tips, YouTube recommends you watch this video about Treasure Wars where you can put your new PvP tips to the test. Definitely watch the video. It will help you out a ton.